in the days and the weeks and the months after September 11th, you did more than what was asked of you under worse circumstances than any of us could have imagined. You fought for justice. You fought for peace for the families who lost their loved ones. And you fought to make sure that what happened that day would never, ever happen again. So let us help you now. Let us fight for you. Good morning. Um, it is truly when the North and South Towers collapsed, they released a massive plume of dust, smoke, and carcinogens. Unbeknownst to FBI agents and probably all of the first responders whose personnel were assigned to the pit, the pile, the fresh kill, landfill, and the New York City exposure zone for weeks and months following the catastrophic collapse, Lower Manhattan evolved into a cesspool of cancer and the air was contaminated and toxic. When we went down to the Trade Center site, we didn't wear respirators, we didn't wear masks, we didn't wear any eye protective gear. It just never occurred to us. And at the conclusion of my shift on 9-12-2001, I remember getting into my bureau car, which was parked near Reed and Greenwich Streets. And it was covered in a film of a light dust, not the cake dust down at the site. And I remember getting into the car, driving up the West Side Highway, and when I turned on the air conditioner in the vehicle, this dust came out. And in November of 2012, I was diagnosed with two very severe cancers. And what followed changed my life forever. I had three major surgeries in 2013 at Columbia Presbyterian. And to this day, I continue to see doctors regularly. Our colleagues are sick, they are dying, and some are already deceased. And I don't think that I will ever be cancer-free. And for 9-11 responders and those who were assigned to the New York City exposure zone, I am convinced that cancer lurks in our bodies. For me, every day is a gift. And as I stand up here, I know I look healthy. I try to keep myself healthy. But I don't know when that day is going to come, if in the near future it will ever come. And my only goal right now is to see my son graduate high school and graduate college. Thank you, Rupert. I don't know if I'm going to speak as good as this.